Hello happy crocheters, this is Lindsay from windingroadcrochet.com and today I'm going to show you how to make this really cute bunny bonnet. This is the bonnet we are making today. It has a nice ribbed edge, a beautiful texture. It will fit a child with a head circumference of about 15 to 16 inches. It currently fits my three month old baby. This bonnet is worked in several different parts. We're gonna first work the crown rows, then side rows, then the brim, then a finishing row, which will include these ties, and then the ears, and then we'll just assemble it really quickly. But it is a really nice little bonnet, really clean edging and everything on it. The written pattern for this does include four total sizes. For this project, you're gonna need a little bit of worsted weight or medium weight number four yarn. I'm using Red Heart with Love. You're gonna need a size H five millimeter crochet hook, a yarn needle, and scissors. To get started, we are going to make a magic circle. I make my magic circles a little differently, so you can do it however you like, but this is how I do it. I will start by making a slip knot, insert my hook, and then we're going to chain two. Now I'm gonna take my yarn end and wrap it around my thumb to create a circle. Take it off my thumb, and then I'm gonna work 12 double crochets into the circle we've made working over these two yarn here. So we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook into that circle. We have two strands we're going under. Pick up that loop and pull it through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two loops to create a double crochet. So now I'm just gonna work another 11 double crochet into this circle. I do not count that chain two as a stitch, so it'll just be 12 double crochets. If you don't like to make a magic circle, the other option is to chain three and then work 12 double crochets into the third chain from the hook. Whichever way you do it works fine. Once you've worked your 12 double crochet, you can take that yarn end and pull it tight to create the magic ring. Pull it nice and tight to have no hole in the center. And then we're going to slip stitch to the first double crochet of the ring. And that completes crown round one. To continue on, we are going to chain one and then gently pull up on our loop. This is how I like to work my turning chains. Gently pull up on the loop. And for round two, we are going to work two double crochets in every stitch around. So working into the very first stitch, we're going to double crochet and then work a second double crochet into that same stitch. And we're just gonna do this in every stitch all the way around for a total of 24 double crochets. So in the next stitch, we're gonna work a double crochet and then a second double crochet into the same stitch. That is our increase. And just repeat this all the way around. When you reach the end of the first row, we're gonna join the row by working a slip stitch into the first double crochet of this round. Now for round three, we're gonna chain one and gently pull up. We're gonna work a stitch pattern in this round. So we're going to double crochet into the first stitch and increase in the following stitch. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around. So into the first stitch, we're gonna work a double crochet. 
In the next stitch, we're going to work two double crochets for an increase. And then we're going to repeat. So then we'll work one double crochet in the next stitch and two double crochets in the stitch after that. And you're simply going to repeat this stitch pattern all the way around your project. You should have a total of 36 double crochets for this round. So we just made it to the end of round three. We're going to work our last increase into the last stitch and then finish the row by slip stitching to the very first double crochet. Now we're ready for crown round four. If you were making a larger size, you would work five or six crown rows, but for this size, we're only going to work four. So we're going to start with a chain one and gently pull up on our loop. The pattern for this row is two double crochet and then an increase. So a double crochet into the first stitch, a double crochet into the next stitch, and two double crochets into the following stitch. So the stitch pattern is double crochet, double crochet, increase. And we're just simply going to repeat this all the way around our project for a total of 48 double crochets. So one double crochet, one double crochet, and then an increase and repeat that pattern. So when you make it to the end of round four for the crown rounds, we're going to work our last increase and slip stitch to the very first stitch. Now we're going to begin our side rows. We will not be joining at the end of these rows. Again, if you want to make a larger size, you would just simply work more rounds in the crown round and you can find instructions for that on the written pattern. Same with when we work the side rows, you could work additional side rows to make it larger as well. But let's go ahead and get started with side row one. So we're moving to a new section. We're going to chain one. And then in the first stitch, we are going to single crochet and then double crochet into the same stitch. So first we work our single crochet then we're going to double crochet. Then we're going to work another stitch pattern. This stitch pattern is skip a stitch and then single and double crochet in the following stitch. So I'm skipping a stitch, working a single crochet in the following stitch, and a double crochet into the same stitch. And then I'm just repeating this pattern. Skip a stitch, work a single crochet and a double crochet into the following stitch. Repeat this all the way around your project until you only have one stitch remaining that needs to be worked. So right here I am working the last stitch pattern. So we're working a single crochet and a double crochet and after this we only have one stitch remaining. In that last stitch we are going to simply work a single crochet. And now that we are working in rows, we are not going to join the first stitch to the last stitch. Instead we will turn at the beginning of the next row. This will create like a v-shape opening at the back of our bonnet. So for side row two, we're going to chain one and turn. We're going to work a single crochet 
and a double crochet into the first stitch. This is going to be our repeat row. So we will repeat what we do here for the next several rows. So once we have that worked, we're going to skip a stitch and work a single crochet and a double crochet into the next stitch. That happens to be a single crochet of the previous row. Once again, we are going to skip a stitch and single and double crochet in the following stitch. Repeat this all the way around until you only have two stitches remaining unworked. So here I'm just working my last repeat, working a single crochet and double crochet. I have two stitches after this left unworked. We're going to skip the second to last stitch and single crochet into the last stitch. At this point we should have 49 stitches in each row. Now all we need to do is simply repeat row 2 until we have a total of 10 side rows or 14 rows, so 4 of the crown rows, 10 of the side rows, for the entire project. So to continue on, I'm just going to chain one and turn my work and repeat what we just did in row two for another nine rows. Sorry, eight rows. Whatever it takes to get to 10 side rows or 14 rows for your entire project. So I'm working in single crochet and a double crochet here, just finishing up my 10th side row. And you can see how we've developed this really pretty texture for the side of our bonnet. I'm going to skip the second to last stitch and single crochet in the last stitch. Again, if you're working a larger size, you would just add additional side rows. Now we're going to create the brim, and once again we're going to start our row count over. We're going to chain one and turn, pull up on our loop just a little bit, and for our first brim row we're simply going to work a double crochet in every stitch across. So we're going to start with a yarn over, insert our hook, pull up a loop, Yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook. And then simply repeat that double crochet stitch in every stitch across. This will lay the foundation for our ribbed texture for the brim, which we will make by using front post and back post double crochets. Now we're working the last double crochet a brim row one. So it's just a clean row of double crochets. To start brim row two, we're going to chain one, turn our work, gently pull up on that loop. We're going to work a double crochet into the first stitch. We're going to work a front post double crochet, so you'll yarn over, insert your hook on the right side of your stitch underneath and then back out the front of the stitch on the left side of your stitch. Yarn over and pull that loop around that stitch. Yarn over, pull through two loops and then pull through two loops. So just creating a double crochet, but working into the stitch underneath it in a different way. Next, we're going to do a back post double crochet. We're going to go on the back of our work, come through on the right side, go back to the back on the left side of your stitch, yarn over, pull that loop through. 
and then just complete your double crochet. Let's do that again. We're going to work a front post double crochet. So go from the front, under and around your stitch. Pull that loop through and create a double crochet. And then a back post double crochet, we go to the back of the work around the post of the stitch and then back to the back of the work. Yarn over, pull that loop through and around that stitch and then create your double crochet. We're going to continue repeating front post and back post double crochets all the way the, to the end of the row until you only have one stitch remaining. It takes a minute, but you will get the hang of working your stitches this way. We'll work a front post double crochet as our last post stitch. And then we're going to work a double crochet into the very last stitch. Now for brim row three, we're going to chain one and turn. We're going to start the row with a double crochet. And then this row is just going to be the opposite of the previous row. So for this row, we're going to start with a back post double crochet. And then we're just going to go from front post double crochet, then a back post double crochet, then a front post, then a back post, and continue alternating them all the way until we only have one stitch left unworked. You will be ending with a back post double crochet. And then for the very last stitch, once again, we will work a double crochet. So we just begin and end the row with a double crochet. To start brim row four, we're just doing the same thing. Chain one and turn. We'll start this row with a double crochet. We'll begin with a front post double crochet. Then we'll work a back post double crochet followed by a front post double crochet. And we will continue alternating front post and back post double crochet until we only have one stitch left to work in our row. And when we get to that very last stitch, we're going to work a double crochet into the last stitch. And that is our brim rows. And for all different sizes of this pattern, we still only work the four brim rows. So that is the same no matter what size you want to work. Now we are going to do what I call the finishing row and it's going to add the ties to our project as well as give us a nice clean edge. To start this row, we will begin by chaining 31. This will create our little bow ties. Once you've completed your 31 chains, we're going to work back along this chain. We're going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook. I'm going to work into the back bumps, but you can work into the chain any way that is comfortable for you. I just like how this looks. We are going to work one single crochet into each chain for a total of 30 single crochets for this part of the row. Once you get to the bottom of the chain, so we've worked the 30 single crochets, now we are going to work along the side of our previous rows. That's just going to give us a nice clean edge. 
So for our brim rows, we work double crochets. So we're going to work two single crochets into the side of each brim row. So here's my first double crochet. I'm just going to work a single crochet around the top portion and a single crochet around the post of the bottom portion. If you don't like how that looks, you can also push your hook through the bottom portion. There's two strands there you can push your hook through, so that's another option. We're moving to the next row. We're going to single crochet around the top of the row. And then single crochet around the bottom of the row, working two single crochets into the side of each brim row. And then just repeat that for the last two brim rows. Then when we reach our side rows, if you remember we started each row with a single crochet. So we're just going to work one single crochet into the side of each side row. And truthfully, if you lose count while you're doing this, how many single crochets you work along this way is not super important. What you can do is just make sure you single crochet evenly along these side rows, or you can choose to keep count. It's completely up to you. You'll keep single crocheting down the side of the rows until you reach this bottom of the V. Here I made it to the bottom of the V and you can see how these single crochets give us a really nice clean edge. So to continue on with this finishing row, we're just going to rotate our work so that we can single crochet into the side, the other side of the side rows. So we're going to work one single crochet into the other side of each side row. When you make it back to the brim rows, we're going to go back to working two single crochets into the side of every double crochet. So you should work a total of eight single crochet into the four side rows, eight total. Once the brim row single crochets are completed, you'll see we have a nice clean edging and all we have to do is to create that last tie. So we are going to chain 31 to create that tie. Once the 31 chain is complete, we are going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook. Again, I'm working into the back bumps. And we're just going to work one single crochet into every chain until we make it back to our bonnet. It'll be a total of 30 single crochets. When you make it back all the way to the bonnet, we are going to fasten off our yarn with about 6 to 10 inches of yarn end. Yarn over and pull the yarn end through the last loop on your hook. We're going to take our yarn needle and we're going to weave in this end. To do this, we're actually going to take that last tie and flip it over so that it lays smooth with the rest of the bonnet. We're going to use our needle and yarn end just to stitch this in place and then we can weave in our end. We will start by making two little stitches to stitch this tie in place. And then we will weave our work back and forth 
three times under a few stitches to secure that yarn in and then just clip your yarn. Next we will weave in our other yarn end which is at the crown. It's important to weave this in. So using my yarn needle I'm just going to weave it under a few stitches one way and then come back and weave it under a few stitches the other way. And then we'll go back the other direction and weave it in one more time. And then just clip your yarn end. Now it is time to create the ears. You will make two ears and I am going to show you how to make a lamb's ear as well as the bunny ear. And the difference between the two is just the length. To get started we're going to make a slip knot and insert our hook. We are going to chain two. We're going to work two single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So here's one single crochet and here's another single crochet. Now we are going to chain one and turn. And what we're going to do is we're going to increase in the first stitch and single crochet across. In this case, it's just in the next stitch. And then we're going to simply repeat this. So for row three, we're going to chain one, turn our work, work an increase or two single crochets into the first stitch, and then single crochet across, which in this case means to single crochet in the next two stitches. And then we're just going to keep repeating this row, starting with a chain one, increase in the first stitch and single crochet across until we have a total of seven rows. Once you've completed seven rows, you should have a total of eight single crochet in your seventh row. You could actually make this ear wider by working more increased rows, but this is enough for me. Now for row eight, we're just going to chain one in turn and single crochet in every stitch across. You're going to repeat row eight working single crochets in every stitch across until you have a total of 15 rows. So we completed row 8 and we're going to repeat this row by chaining 1, turning our work and single crocheting across again for row 9. And you'll repeat this until you have a total of 15 rows for the lamb's ear or 30 rows for the bunny's ear. So here is the completed lamb's ear, a total of 15 rows. So we would just finish here, work our finishing row, and then you would just fold this ear in half and sew it onto the hat like you see here and it just makes a really cute lamb's ear. Or you can chain one in turn and continue working until you have a total of 30 rows for the bunny's ear. So here is 30 rows completed and now we're ready to begin the finishing row. So similar to working on the bonnet, we are gonna chain one and work one single crochet into the side of every row. 
and you're going to continue working up the side of the row until you reach the point of the ear. And with single crochet rows, it's pretty easy to see where to put your hook. When you get to the very tip of the ear, you can go ahead and work one single crochet into that very first chain, the same chain that we worked row one into. Then we are going to chain one to make it easy to rotate to the other side of our work. We're going to work another single crochet into that foundation chain. And then we're simply going to work one single crochet into the side of every row down the other side of the ear. You're going to do this for both the bunny ear or the lamb ear just to give it a nice finished look. Here we have the finished ear and we're just going to fasten off leaving about 10 inches of yarn and then you're just going to yarn over and pull that finished yarn, the yarn in through the last loop on your hook. And then we're ready to sew on the ears after you make a second ear of course. To sew the ear on, we're just going to use a yarn needle and our yarn end. We're going to fold the ear in half at the top. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew this ear into the very middle of the side rows. So you can see our brim rows and our crown rows. We're going to sew the ear in the middle of the side rows right about here. You want to make sure that your bonnet is folded and laying flat because we're also going to sew the ear approximately one and a half inches from that top fold of the bonnet. I'm just going to be using a simple whip stitch to sew through one side of the bonnet and through both sides of the ear to secure it to the bonnet. So I'm just going to whip stitch this in place and then I'm going to go to the underside of the ear and weave in my end and clip in my thread. You definitely want to make sure you weave this yarn end in back and forth three times to secure it. So you're just going to sew on your other ear and your bonnet's going to be complete. I really hope you enjoyed this pattern. I know this was a much longer video than usual because of how many parts this pattern has, but I do think it's a really pretty and intricate bonnet and great for a baby. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. I hope you enjoyed the pattern and thank you so much for watching.